Hey, Miles here, milesbecker.com. In this video, you will learn exactly how to do keyword research for free. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step on the laptop with free tools, and this is kind of the updated for 2019 variation. Now, personally, I still use a paid keyword research tool, but I bootstrapped my business from zero with my wife, and I know that sometimes it's really difficult to justify buying yet another tool. So I wanted to show you the free approach, and we're gonna go kind of down two separate paths with this. There's going to be the quick and easy variety, and then we're going to dig a little bit deeper to show you how you can do competition analysis as well. So we'll do both of those in this one video, and there's a free item you're going to need. But before we jump on the computer, I want to kind of reinforce the, the power and the benefit of taking time to do keyword research. You see, my wife's website has been kind of visited by about 16 million individuals and over 80 percent of those people found her website from organic search engine traffic the reason why 10 million plus individuals closer to like 13 million individuals have visited my web my wife's website through the search engines is because my wife habituated the process of doing keyword research from day one that was one of the first skills i taught her and it's something that she still does to this day. You see, the way the internet works and the way the search engines works, it's based on relevance and engagement. And you're able to get the relevance between what the users are searching on Google and your content through the use of keyword phrases. How do you know what phrases they're searching for? That's keyword research. That's what you're gonna learn right here. And then the next step, just so you know, is um, SEO, and that's search engine optimization. I have a free video that'll teach you how to learn SEO, how to implement, how to actually take these keywords and where to put them and what to do with them. I'll make sure and link to that video in the description below so you can check that one out after. It is a masterclass. I did it for free here for you on YouTube. And that's enough uh, talking, let's get into it. So first off, the tool that you'll need is called Keywords Everywhere. And you can access this tool at keywordseverywhere.com. Now, you're going to need to install it to your browser. Now, I've already got it installed. It's this black circle with a K up in the bar up on the right corner. So you choose whichever browser you're on, whether you're on Chrome or Firefox. You click to install it. Once it's installed, you need to give them your email address. Now, they're very clear on whether you want to be on their marketing list or not. I chose to not be on their marketing list, and they have never sent me a marketing email. So they're really good at honoring your information, but they send you an API key. And an API key is how this tool actually pulls all of the data that you need. It's free, they email it to you, you just copy and paste it, it's super easy, but you have to actually go through that step to get the data that you're about to see. And I've already done that. So I'm not gonna, you're not gonna follow me along through that process. So keywordseverywhere.com. Then what happens is it changes just about every page you're on that has a search parameter into an actual keyword research system. So right here on Google, and as I'm recording this, it's uh, November 19th, so we're entering the holiday season. Uh, so I'm gonna use some kind of pseudo holiday friendly keyword phrases as our example. And really the first idea that I wanna go for are gifts for, right? So let's say you had a website that was about um, unique gifts for dads and for girlfriends and for moms, et cetera, and you're wondering which piece of content you want to create. Little heads up, you're a little late for creating this type of content in November. You want to do this in the summer, but that's kind of beside the point. Anyways, you're trying to figure out what gets searched more. Is it gifts for mom? Is it gifts for dad? Is it gifts for girlfriend? What are the phrases? So now that I have the Keywords Everywhere plugin running, and the API key is set up, I simply go to google.com and I start to search. So I'm gonna type in gifts for. Now you'll notice next to the auto populate that are automatically comes up, you'll see it actually has search volume here. So gifts for men, 368,000 searches per month, and then it shows the actual cost per click if you were running pay-per-click ads. The one is the competition, but that's only for a paid advertising. So you ignore that last number. That one's irrelevant to us. What we're really looking at is the search volume. And this is, when I said the kind of quick and dirty way of doing keyword research, you literally just look here for the search volume to find the phrases that have search volume. So we could say gifts for men, and I can see 368,000. You can see gifts for men birthday is 33,000. What if I wanna try best gifts for men? 
I can see that has 60,500 searches per month. Best gifts for men 2018 only has a thousand searches a month. So by just looking at the numbers that are coming up, you're able to really understand what gets the actual bulk of search who is doing more searching and what are the phrases that they're searching for. So let's do girlfriend here. So best gifts for girlfriend gets searched 33,000 times per month and there's only 26 cents of the cost per click. Now I'm not interested in running the cost per click. That's a very, very easy way to see how many people or how expensive is that click gifts for girlfriend is only has 74,000. So there's almost twice as many searches for gifts for girlfriend and it's about twice as expensive. So there's more volume and there's a little more competition. So let's go ahead and search this now. And I'm going to go ahead and search the gifts for girlfriend. And what you're going to see is here on the, let's see, where did it hide it down at the bottom? You can see it's got the search related gifts. Where is there? It is. Sorry about that. It took a minute to load. So on the right hand side, you can see it comes up with the related keywords and it's giving you the ideas that are similar to what you searched. So when I search for gifts for girlfriend, it puts just below the search bar, all of the information about that keyword phrase up top. So I can see the search volume. I can see the cost per click and then the competition. Again, this is not organic competition. So you ignore that number and you can actually turn it off in their settings if you want, but then it shows me the related keywords, romantic gifts for girlfriend. Interesting. So now I'm seeing that this is actually giving me a longer tail idea. Long tail means there's more words. It's more specific. Generally speaking, it's easier for you to rank for more more specific keyword phrases, but we'll touch on the competition for the search volume uh, here pretty soon. Surprise gifts for girlfriend, gifts for girlfriend birthday, creative gifts for girlfriend. So you've got all of the different phrases right here on the right hand side. And then at the very bottom, it gives you the Google searches that are related and it gives you the search volume for these as well. And that's why they call it keywords everywhere, right? It allows you to really just do your normal work. You search for things you search for and you just work within Google and it displays the keywords over top of the Google page through the browser extension. It's a really handy tool and this is the game, right? So if you're doing the, I'll do the, the vegan dog food niche. Um, so don't worry. I don't have a dog and I don't feed dogs vegan dog food, but I think it's hilarious. People kind of hate on me a little bit for that because um, they're, they're carnivores and I, I get it, but you'll see there is a business around this. So searching vegan dog food, you can see there's 9,900 searches per month. The cost per click is $1.52. And then on the right over here, it's going to give us the other keyword phrases. So we've got vegan dog food recipes get searched a thousand times a month. It has a $2 and 68 cent cost per click, which is crazy. Um, then there's different types of vegan dog food, best vegan dog food, balanced vegan dog food, organic vegan dog food. You can see the different phrases. Then down at the bottom, you've got more different phrases here. Um, vegan dog food recipes, vegan dog food reviews, best vegan dog food. It tells you the search volume because you always want to be creating content that's focused on keyword phrases that actually get searched. If you don't have relevance to what's being searched in your content, you're never going to be found. You're never going to get any traffic because nobody's actually searching for that. It's the number one problem I see with organic search engine marketers getting started is they don't use the keyword data. They don't do the keyword research and then they don't integrate it into their site. The last one I'm going to look for is FPV drone. So an FPV drone is a first person view drone. It's the racing drones. You wear the head mask with it and you got the controllers. There's all kinds of bits and pieces required to purchase in the FPV drone world. It's definitely um, trending. It's a great gift idea for, for young kids and whatnot. And you can see here, FPV drone gets searched 27,100 times a month. And then it's got all of the different keywords, the FPV drone racing kit, 1900 searches a month, best FPV drone, 1900 search per month. And then you can see it asks about the goggles, the cameras and all of the different parts, etc. And then we're going to scroll to the very bottom and you've got the different keyword phrases here at the very bottom. So that's, that's the basics of it, right? You just literally, you add this tool to your browser. And then every time you search on Google, as long as you got that API key in place, it's going to pull all sorts of search data. And it makes it a really quick way for you to, when you're writing your content and let's say I'm writing about a, a racing drone and an FPV drone. And I'm like, do I call it FPV drone or do I call it a racing drone? Well, I can see right now that FPV drone gets 27,000 searches per month. So racing drone on the other hand, gets searched when it pulls up. 710 times a month. So if I name my post 
about FPV drone, it will have a higher likelihood of reaching that pool of 27,000 people who are searching for FPV drone. If I name it racing drone, then I'll have the potential of reaching 710 people per month who are searching for racing drone. Which traffic source do you want to tap into? And I get this isn't your niche, but I'm saying, do you want an opportunity to have an audience of 27,000 people per month searching? or 710 people. It's really the same idea because a racing drone is an FPV drone, right? Like all racing drones are FPV drones. But now you can see how utilizing keyword research to make the decisions on what your title is going to be, what your description is going to be, what your headings, what your videos, what your blog posts are going to be about are e either going to align you with large audiences of people searching for content on that topic or you're just gonna flat out miss out because you named it something different or because you think it should be called a racing drone, but the rest of the market thinks it's an FPV drone. So that's the first part is to do the basic keyword research. Now I've got a basic spreadsheet here and I've got across the top, I have keyword phrase, search volume, phrase competition, title competition and URL competition. I'm going to show you how to go get those three levels of competition so you can do a little bit of analysis. Now I'm going to do this for, I think, let's do it for four keyword phrases. And I'm going to go back to the best gifts because it's going to be relatively easy since it's best gifts for mom, dad, girlfriend type thing. So uh, let's go pull those keyword phrases first. And then this is what you'll end up doing. If you're doing keyword research for clients, this is how you do it. Or if you want to batch the work and do a bunch of keyword research, some random Sunday or Saturday to have all of your work done in the future. So when you're creating content on Monday night or Tuesday after work, whatever, you don't have to do the keyword research. It's already done this is how you would batch that work and it'll help you analyze not just the search volume but what's the competition because if it has a really high search volume but it also has an extremely high competition level it's gonna be really hard for you to rank for that phrase so let's jump in and do that so I'm gonna do gifts for dad to start and we're gonna let that pull up and I'm gonna see what comes up from that so gifts for dad has 135,000 searches per month. So I'm going to type in gifts for dad here. And that is 135,000. Cool. And then I'm going to do gifts for girlfriend real quick. So you can see right here, it pulls up 74,000 per month. And obviously the idea here is that you've got some sort of a gift guide type website. Um, so you're just trying to figure out what, for that next blog post you're gonna write, who are you gonna write that about? Gifts for mom is 135,000. And then let's do one more, let's do gifts for boyfriend. Let's not leave the boyfriend out, 135,000, interesting. So apparently uh, girlfriends are better at searching for gifts for their boyfriends than boyfriends are searching for gifts for their girlfriends. How about that? The data says something true there. So then there's three ways you can use Google to have Google tell you how many other websites are out there with that exact phrase, with that phrase in the title, and then with that phrase in the URL. So if somebody's taken time to optimize their page or their posts all the way to where they get that exact phrase inside of the URL, that means it's a highly optimized post. If it's in the title, it's a kind of optimized post. And if it's just a phrase on the page, it's not all that optimized. Eventually, you might find that one of these indicators is the best for you, and you might only do the research research for one of these every time. I just want to show you how to do all three of them because I like being thorough and I like you knowing how this all works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to Google. I'm going to copy the gifts for dad and we're going to actually put it in quotation marks and we're going to search it, right? So I literally gifts for dad in quotation marks and now we're searching it. So what I'm telling Google by putting the phrase in the quotation marks is I only want pages that have this exact match phrase in them. And you can see we have 24,500,000 results. So this is my phrase match results. It's 24 million. I'm gonna put 24.5 mm. And let me center everything up here just so it's easy to read. One quick sec. Perfect. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for girlfriend. 
gifts for mom. 41 million. And then gifts for boyfriend. Oops. And again, they need to be in quotations to get this data point, 14.4 million. So the quick and the quick thing I'm noticing is that with the highest search volume of 135,000, that the gifts for boyfriend has the lowest phrase competition, right? So this is the highest search volume and this is the lowest competition. If you want to mark which ones look the best, I'm gonna use green because I think green means a little bit more go. That's just telling me that in this column, out of all four of these phrases, this one's looking the best so far. Now we do title competition and in order to get the data from Google for how many pages has this in the title, you need to use a certain kind of custom search parameter um, and it is in title. So I N T I T L E colon. And then you just leave the words immediately after there. Now, if I leave it after without the quotations, they can be rearranged. But if I put it in quotations, it would need to be an exact match. I'm going to leave it out of quotations again in title altogether, a colon, no space, and then your keyword phrase, and then we hit enter. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull and let me know that 13.8 million results have that in the title. So that means it is highly optimized, right? So we're at 13.8 million. Now I'm gonna go up and do the same for gifts for mom. Oop, not MLM, that's kind of funny, that doesn't work. Mum. Um, 14,500,000. That was a huge decrease. You see, we went from 41 million to 14.5 million. So a lot of sites mention this, but maybe even a third of them are actually optimized for that. Let's see what girlfriend is here. And 2 million is all there are there. 2 million is a very low number for that. And then it was dad and gifts for dad. 15.5 million. Cool. So in this situation, again, we've got a little bit of a winner here on the gifts for boyfriend, but I'm noticing that the drop down to 2 million. So we've got half the search volume, but we literally have one sixth the competition at the title level. This is very noteworthy to me. And these are the little data points that I'm looking for. So I like that one and I like this one. So I'm just going to give them a quick highlight. Now we do the URL competition. So we got to change our little kind of um, search parameter here and we just remove title and we add URL. So it's in URL, I N U R L colon, then your keyword phrase. So gifts for dad. So now we're looking for how many have, ha ha, <laughs> this is great. So Google is now saying, dude, what are you doing? Right? Like you are searching crazy search parameters and you're searching a little bit too aggressively. There's also the data being pulled through Google from the API from keywords everywhere. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to turn off keywords everywhere by simply clicking the button and turning it off. So it's not going to pull so much. I'm going to tell Google, I'm not a robot because I'm a real human. And in theory, this is going to let me finish my keyword research. When you pay for keyword tools, they bypass all of this. They go in through the backdoor API. They're not browsing from the front end and you literally get around all of those types of challenges. Now we get our data. So, so we're good. And hopefully this works for the, the duration of the video at this point. Um, in URL colon gifts for dad gets 5.2 million searches. So gifts for dad, so that's 5.2. So now MM for million. Now you can see from the title competition to the actual in the URL, we've dropped down in a third. So these are the most optimized, right? If you're getting it in the title and the URL, that means you're highly optimized for it. That's what I teach in my learn SEO video. Um, so that means there's actually not that many in kind of the URL competition. Now let's check what girlfriend says. Come on, Google, let me through. All right, we're getting it. So 1.3 million. Then for mom, 6.7 million, kind of rounding up there a little bit. And then for boyfriend, it's the last one, 12.6 million. So at this point, the boyfriend phrase 
actually has a ton of websites optimized for it. So what I'm noticing here is that the Gifts for Dad has the lowest search, the lowest URL competition volume. So that's going to get hit with the green box here. And then I'm kind of looking again, this whole like gifts for girlfriend at 1.3 million. That is very, very small comparatively speaking, right? It's about half the search volume here, but it's lower than half. It's about a third of what's it's less than a third of what's going on here. So that's really good. So from here at this point, now this is the data that we've been able to build ourselves up to, right? Like this is the moment of like, okay, I've done my research. I think that looking at these numbers, my best opportunities are probably gifts for dad and gifts for girlfriend. Those seem to be, and based on the fact that gifts for dad has a very high search volume, but it has a low URL competition volume. I actually kind of like that. And I think that's worthy here. The gifts for girlfriend looks really good because this number is so extremely low over time. I'm probably going to create content for all four of these. This was just an example to help you understand how to get the data, right? It's not that big of a deal what we do from here, because this was a, a random kind of out of thin air type example, but it shows you the full process. The first thing you want to do is you go get your keyword phrases and you let Google help you through Google's auto populate and through the related searches. So again, I'm going to search this without keyword tool, the keywords everywhere on. When I search gifts for boyfriend, I can put space A and it's going to automatically pull up more ideas. Space B is going to pull up more ideas. I can go in the beginning and put in best gifts for boyfriend. It's going to bring me up even more ideas. So I'm letting Google prime me. And then if you go to the bottom, you're going to see there's always more ideas down here at the bottom as well. So Google is kind of giving me the ideas and then the keywords everywhere tool gives me the search volume. Then I use the search in quote for the phrase competition, the in title. So it's I N T I T L E colon for the title competition. And then in URL, I N U R L colon for the URL competition. And I pull all the numbers and now I have to use my brain and I have to actually analyze this and think, Hmm, okay. With that much search volume and these types of competition, which is my best next keyword phrase to focus on for that next piece of content I'm putting out as a content marketer. And at this point you might be thinking, well, miles, but out of all this competition, I don't know how strong the sites are on the first page, right? So it doesn't always matter how many different pages there are ranking. What kind of matters is how strong is the competition on the first page? And that's really what you get when you go over to a paid keyword research tool. I'm going to show you the tool I use just for a quick second to help you understand how that works, but I'm not going to teach you how to use it because I have a deep dive video on that. So this is, if you go to the milesbeckler.com forward slash KW finder, you'll see the actual tool that I use day in and day out. I'll have a link for that pop up in the top of the video that you can click. It'll open a new tab. That'll all obviously be down in the um, description as well. So you can see I've got gift ideas for men entered here and I've searched. Now this tool is designed for organic content marketers. So the keyword difficulty score here that has a number and it displays right here, that is for us as content marketers. And what it's taking into account is how strong are the sites on the top 10 of Google. So here is the top 10 of Google shown. It's looking at the domain authority. It's looking at the page authority. It's looking at the citation flow and it's looking at the trust flow. These are two Moz numbers and these are two majestic numbers. It's looking at how many backlinks each one has. And then it looks at how many Facebook shares the URL has. So it really gives you a deep analysis of the actual strength of the keyword phrase. And what you could do when you search is you scroll down and you look for the lower keyword difficulty scores. So you can see right here, this one has a 39. That's a lower keyword difficulty score. Here's a 31 unusual gifts for men shows that it's got a lower keyword score there. But again, you get a lower search volume at that area. So I like this tool because it gives me a really clear and easy way. It gives me suggestions for relevant phrases, tells me the search volume. Um, I don't really look at the cost per click or the PPC stuff because I don't do paid. I look at the keyword difficulty, the keyword difficulty, and then I'm looking at what's here. I'm always looking to see if a YouTube video is on the first page. Since I do YouTube, I like to sneak on the first page. Again, this is at milesbeckler.com forward slash keyword finder. And if you search for my, um, 
how to do keyword research like a boss video. Um, that's the title. I go do a deep dive in that tool. It's about an hour session. Um, I did a session as if um, for a friend of mine, they run a uh, mountaineering store, an outdoor store in the Lake Tahoe area. And I did a, a deep dive keyword research session for them as my example. So it was a real world example, not just kind of like pulling it out of thin air like I did on this one, using that keyword tool. So you can see it in action if you're interested. But again, the whole goal of this video was to help you realize that there are free tools out there it takes more time you got to do more digging that's essentially what you're buying when you pay for a paid keyword tool is the ability to get all of that data summed up in an instant right like that that keyword tool at milesbecker.com kwfinder like that tool loads in a millisecond all of the data that it takes sometimes you know 10 minutes 15 minutes to obtain but if you're bootstrapping where I was when I got started, we got time, but we don't have the money. And that's why doing keyword research for free is still, you got to do it one way or another. Whether you're doing the free version, you're spending extra time to get all the data to choose which ones you're going after. If you're doing it manually for free, great. Just make sure you're doing the work. If you've got the extra money to be able to invest and actually get the keyword tool to kind of give you that data a little bit faster, great. Do that. Either way, do your keyword research and then move on and be sure you go into the SEO video my learn SEO video so you know what to do with the keywords you want to create content on those phrases but then how do you get those keywords into your content on your website in a way that Google's going to fall in love with again because Google thinks about relevance is the biggest biggest thing that Google thinks about in engagement that's the other side of the equation uh, so you need to make sure that everything you're doing is hyper relevant to your keyword kind of the keywords that you find, your posts, your titles, your descriptions, all those different things, the images that you use, the videos that you embed on your posts, they all need to be relevant to your main keyword so you can create the most relevant and most valuable post on that keyword phrase. That's what Google wants to see. This is how you find out what people are searching so you can make sure when you put your effort towards putting out that kind of content, it's done in a way that's gonna get you to that pool of tens of thousands of people and not to the pool of 700 people as we saw in that earlier example with the FPV drone and the racing drone. On that note, thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. If you know somebody who's bootstrapping a business and they're doing content marketing and they're WordPressing and they're blogging and they're doing their thing, share this video with them, grab it, send it to them on Facebook or email it to them, do what you do. I appreciate you. I appreciate the engagement. Be sure to subscribe if you have not already. I have another video coming out in two days. I do three videos a week for you here. If you have subscribed, hit the bell so you get notified when these videos come out. And on that note, I'm gonna call it. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to connecting with you on the next video. And until we connect again, be well, my friend.